Welcome to Third Eyesight. I'm your host, Juan Francisco, and I'm a spiritual intuitive who practices tarot card reading and mediumship. I've always been super curious about the supernatural and paranormal, and I'm here to share my stories and interview folks who want to share their own stories. Let's get to it. Just a kind reminder to please leave a review for this podcast if you really, really enjoy it. You can see the review area for Spotify only in the Spotify phone app towards the top of the page for this podcast. In Apple Podcasts, you can find it at the bottom of the page for this podcast. And for Google Podcasts, it should be easy to find on the very same page where you access all the episodes for the podcast. And thank you. (laughs) That's all I can say is thank you for uh, supporting this podcast and I appreciate all the listeners who send me messages on Instagram. I've had one sent to me an email and I just, I can't believe that this podcast is reaching an international audience. It makes me so, so happy. I, it's only what I've, it's what I've dreamed of for this podcast. So thank you. Thank you. So today's episode is going to focus on quote unquote unfinished business with spirit. So as I explained before, probably in my first few episodes of the podcast, I grew up with a Roman Catholic influence. I went to a Catholic elementary into middle school, and then I attended a Protestant high school. But most of my belief system today is, a lot of it is influenced by my Roman Catholic upbringing. And When I grew up in Christian schools and in the Christian religion um, through those schools, I always heard about, you know, forgiveness, how important it is to forgive. And I mean, it's in the, uh, what is it called? Oh my goodness. I feel like a bad Catholic. God forgive me. Um, The Lord's Prayer. Oh my goodness. I was going to say the Our Father Prayer, but you can call it that too, but the Lord's Prayer. Um, How does it go? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So forgiving uh, forgiving us of our sins, just as we would forgive someone else of their sins against us. So I grew up with that mentality. Now, I do believe that forgiveness is a good thing, but I'll get into a little bit of, in terms of spirit and my own experiences channeling spirit as a medium, how forgiveness has played a role in messages from spirit that I've received and in the way that I've seen other mediums channel spirit and hit on the topic of forgiveness. So going back to what I was saying about my upbringing, I grew up learning that you have to forgive people. You have to forgive. And if you don't forgive, then you will be, there's punishment that can come with that. That's what I learned. That's what I understood. There is just such an emphasis on being forgiven in many religions and on forgiving people. And I, I think as, as much as other people out there, many other people out there struggled with, well, there are some things that maybe feel unforgivable. You, you know, I, I could think of the worst things possible that I just, uh, things that I just, I don't think I could bring myself to forgive very easily. Now, here's my own personal philosophy on forgiveness and uh, how we are forgiven by our higher power, what I call God, what you may call anything you'd like to call it. I don't believe in eternal punishment. Now listen, I used to believe in hell. I used to believe it was a place. I used to think I was going there because I'm a gay man. I was a gay boy and I became a gay man. I thought, well, if I act on my gayness, I'm going to go to hell. And over time, I, you know, I came out of the closet, I got more comfortable with myself, and I was so happy. I felt so at peace being comfortable with myself. And I think that transformed my, my thoughts about hell. And it made me consider, well, if, the people, if people are telling me that I'm going to hell because I'm gay, because I act on my gayness, and yet here I am being as gay as I like to be and expressing my, my sexuality the way I'd like to, and I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong, then should I really believe them? Should I really believe what they say 
about anything regarding heaven and hell and anything in between, that has influenced my, my belief or lack of belief in hell. Now, I may be wrong. And there are times, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being. There are times when I think, well, there's somebody that I've read about that has done a horrendous thing to somebody else. And it made the news and uh, I see it on TV and it, I, horrendous things people do. And I think, could those people, could, could the soul of that person really be going to the same place that I'm going to or the next person's going to? That That is, I'm assuming I'm going to heaven. <laughs> um, I, is that possible? Now, I believe in only heaven. I believe that we all go to the same place. And in that same breath, I will say there are times when I doubt that. Because I think, well, with the horrible things people do on this planet, in this universe, there must be another place for them. Because how could they be in the same presence as people who try their darnness to do the best for other people that they can. While these folks are hurting people. <sighs> well, I do believe in an all-forgiving God, an all-forgiving universe. And I believe there is no limit, there is no boundary to the love and forgiveness of this universe, of God. And... I do believe today, I may change my mind in 10 years, 20 years, and that's okay. Just like how I changed my mind 10 years ago. Although I don't think I want to revert back to how I used to believe. I really don't. But we can change over time. That's fine. As of today, I believe that we all go to the other side. All there is is the other side. And it is simply heaven. Now, how that plays then into us forgiving each other. I used to watch mediums on TV who would say to folks that they were reading, and in this particular instance I could think of, it's been Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium, as some of you know I love her, duh, based on my Instagram. And she has told people that, well, as she's channeling the soul of a loved one, the loved one is telling the sitter across from her, you can be as angry as you want with me. That's okay. And that really spoke to me. It really spoke to me when I would watch those episodes and hear that message. And then when I started channeling souls myself, and this may be influenced by my belief system, uh, you know, watching those messages shared by Teresa Caputo or through Teresa Caputo for, by spirit, did influence my feelings about forgiveness. So I thought, wow, that makes so much sense. Like that it's such a graceful way. Uh, it's, it's showing so much grace with the sitter, with the person still in the physical world, that they can be as angry as they like to be because they have the right to be, to feel that way if they want to because they're human. So going back to what I was saying, when I entered this, the, the sphere of doing mediumship readings in circle, individually with people, I have felt the same thing. There will be times when I will channel the soul of somebody. And I can remember this one, this one time I channeled the soul of somebody's father. This woman, um, she seemed like she was in her, between her 50s and her 60s. She was on the Zoom and mediumship circle. And I told her, you know, your father is here. I feel your father. And I see you growing up in a rural area, a very rural area. She said, yes. And I said, but there's a very strong presence of church and religion. She goes, yes. And after sharing a couple other messages that some resonated with her, some didn't, I did share with her, your father wants to say that he's sorry for how he pressured you, for how he was with you. And she said, I understand that. And I said, he wants you to know that you don't have to forgive him. Forgiving him won't do anything for his soul because he's in a good place. He's in heaven. He's on the other side. He doesn't need anything from you. He's fine. He's dandy. And you're going to be with him one day. So forgiving him won't do anything for his soul. Forgiving him would be more for you. But you don't have to focus on needing to do it because he understands. 
And I've shared that message of a couple other people with their loved ones coming, uh, coming through. And when I share that, not only do I believe it, but I just feel it. That's why I'm getting, that's why I, I share it because I feel it so strongly from spirit. And I just feel this sense of grace and understanding. And like I said, it's come from several people. It's mostly been parents who've said that, parents on the other side. And it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling. So that brings me to the point of this podcast. When we feel like we have unfinished business with someone on the other side, I think it's very healthy to remind ourselves that there is no such thing as unfinished business. In the physical world, many things feel unfinished, but on the other side, everything is absolute completion. Everything is at completion. And everything is just the way it's supposed to be. It's hard for us on this side to understand that because there are things that we refuse to accept. And there's nothing wrong with that because that by refusing to accept our present conditions or the way things are, we are making a statement about the essence of who we are and where we see ourselves because we know we deserve a path, a situation, um, a circumstance that matches the essence of who we are. And so it's healthy to face that, to confront that. Abraham Hicks calls it contrast. And contrast is good for us because it helps us learn more about ourselves and the essences of who we are. So while on this side of things, we may not understand that things are happening the way they're supposed to be. On the other side, everything is at full completion all the time. Everything's meant to be as it is. You know what's funny? I don't know how I got to that point. I went from forgiveness to that, and I'm forgetting how I got there. <laughs> well, that's one, you know, my typical me, a Gemini, always thinking about ideas and spewing them out and then forgetting how I got there. Ah, unfinished business. Unfinished business, that's what it was. So there is no such thing as unfinished business. And this idea that, we don't have finished business with a person on the other side is, I, I guess I'll call it an illusion that our human, like our human self gives to us. Like we are so wrapped up in the human physicality of it all that we think we don't have full, like a conclusion to something with the other person who passed. Now, when it comes to closure, closure is something I want to talk about very delicately. And this is, this is outside of forgiveness. Like closure being, you know, in terms of maybe someone passed tragically. Someone passed earlier than we thought they would. Or if someone passed naturally at an old age, but we just feel so impacted by it. I mean, who am I to tell somebody, you don't have to look for closure. It's okay. They're in a good place. That would be really insensitive of me. What I do know is... Closure is something that we struggle with. And regardless of how a person passes in this physical universe, their soul is in a place of absolute bliss and heaven. And they are not in need of closure. Now, when it comes to, this gets a little tricky now, but when it comes to paranormal activity in a home, um, I do believe sometimes our souls can have such a strong will, a stubborn will to want to stay because we don't want to accept that we've left our physical bodies, that we tend to quote unquote haunt a place. But I don't, the word haunt sounds so scary. It really is just for me, like when they say a place is haunted, it's either a place that holds residual energy, which is energy that was exerted from our physical bodies when we were living in a space and is kind of like on a loop. And uh, because let's say we walked up and down uh, a certain set of stairs every single day. Well, that energy of us walking up and down the stairs will continue after we pass. So that's residual energy. And that's why some people, when they're in a haunted building, will hear footsteps going up and down the stairs. That would be not an intelligent energy doing that. It's more of residual energy. Whereas an energy that 
answers to yet like to, to questions with yeses and nos by lighting up a, a light once or twice for yes for no i'm sorry one for yes two for no that is an intelligent energy that is present in the room now anyone can do that on the other side but i think there are some cases where some of us feel so tied to our physical bodies that we want to stay in the physical space and we, we remain there when we really don't need to and that's when people can come in to help bring that soul over to to carry that soul over to the light of God, light the light of the universe and source. So, oh my goodness, I did it again. <laughs> I go down these rabbit holes with unfinished business and closure. There we go. I gotta get better. I gotta write these things down. With closure, outside of those circumstances, a soul really doesn't need closure most of the time. That's my personal belief. I do believe there are souls that may seem like they're stuck here. Maybe they could use the closure by, you know, we can help by praying them into the light. But otherwise, there is no closure usually needed. It's more for us on this side of things that we need the closure of coming to terms of how a person passed and the fact that they are no longer physically here. And having hope in the fact that they are still spiritually very much here with us. And again, who am I to tell somebody, stop worrying about closure because they're in a good place? While I believe what I believe about closure and the physical and the physical world, there is a way to, well, there is a need to be compassionate with someone who's going through grief and feels like they need closure. And that's, I think the best way to help them is to love them into a, a sense of, either finding their closure or discovering that they don't need the closure to heal and to, and to continue living their life. So unfinished business, whether it's closure that we feel like we need or the, or the need that we feel to forgive the person who passed for something they did to us. And uh, I think that when it comes to forgiveness, we can really appreciate that because there is no need to forgive that that soul who took on the role of a physical person who did something to us that we feel we're traumatized by or extremely hurt by the fact that that we don't need to forgive them to help their soul breaks the shackles that we may be putting on ourselves about, I need to forgive, I need to forgive, I need to forgive. It's good for their soul, I need to forgive. What a sense of freedom we can give to ourselves. And this isn't to discourage forgiveness. I really do believe forgiveness is good for us to do, for ourselves to do. It's good for ourselves. And I think it is different when it comes to physical, in the world, physical relationships. I think... When it comes to interpersonal relationships, forgiveness is not something that we're obligated to do. We have every right to end a relationship, end a connection, because we simply cannot, we have, we feel so uncomfortable living with the shadow of the wrong someone did to us. But forgiveness, even in those circumstances, can be good for you and good for the other person to hear. Talk about closure, right? But again, it's not, it's not obligatory. But forgiveness with the other side, with someone on the other side, it's to know that 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 is not really needed, that the other person doesn't need it on the other side because they're in full serenity and peace with everything that everything that is beautiful and great. They don't need anything. They are in need of nothing. What a way to free ourselves from the burden of I need to forgive, I need to forgive. What I call God, God understands our humanity. God understands our trauma. And I believe when it comes to forgiveness, it is up to no organized religion to tell us, to tell you how to forgive. That is strictly between you and your maker, you and your loved ones, you and your higher power. And it's nobody's business nobody's business. 
So I hope that by listening to this episode, you know that if you feel like you, you, if you have someone on the other side with whom you have a difficult relationship with or had a difficult relationship with when they were in the physical world, I'm here to tell you, and listen, it's not easy for me to tell you this because my former Catholic self, the little voice in my head goes, no, you can't say that. But this is what I feel in readings. It's what I feel. It's what I, I, I feel it so much. That your loved ones don't need you to forgive them. They want you to be happy. They want you to heal. If healing involves forgiveness and you come to discover that that's what you need to do to heal, do it. But if you feel like you are fighting, you are fighting something within yourself to try and forgive, and you feel like it's, it's keeping you back, keeping you back from healing, your loved ones understand that maybe, that's not, maybe it's not the best moment to try and forgive right now, and that's okay. That's okay. I hope that this was an empowering episode for you. This one has been on my mind as well. It's just like the last few ones. This one's been on my mind for quite a while. And it's something that I, this, this feeling of not needing to forgive someone on the other side is a, is a beautiful, it's a beautiful feeling that I get when I channel spirit. And it's a beautiful thing to watch and to hear when, when you watch a medium tell somebody that, oh man, it's, it's like you feel these, you feel those shackles just break. It's a gorgeous, it really is. I know it's a big word. It is a gorgeous feeling. And we're, we're human. Like I said, my former Catholic, that little voice in my head wants to say all these things about forgiveness and all these things about what's right and what's wrong. But nothing can deny the feeling that I feel. What I feel when I share these words with you in this podcast episode. And our best compass is our feelings. It really is. So let yourself be with your feelings. Let your feelings guide what is best for your healing and what's best for your relationship with the thought or with the soul of that person on the other side. So thank you for listening to this episode. Just a quick note that I may or may not be releasing an episode next week. I will be out of town. Um, And actually, as this episode goes up, I will be current. I will will be out of town when this episode goes up and you're while you're listening to it. But because I'll be out of town the week that you're listening to this episode, I might not be able to record a new episode. Had a last minute travel plan and I'm I'm excited because I get to see my family. Uh, but uh, I will be I'll be back soon. I will be back soon. If it's not next week, you know it'll be the week after that. So until then, have a gorgeous can use that word again. Have a gorgeous day and sending lots of love to you and your loved ones. 